The Next Generation Data Center is, we define it as a 24 by 7 lights out computing. Uh, Gartner calls it real-time infrastructure, some other companies call it NGDC, so it's all the same kind of concept. You have a totally virtualized environment, standard building blocks, highly automated, that really takes out the operational overhead that you have in a typical classic lighting environment. Now the question customers have is how do I get there? Because if I just buy blades, is it going to give me that? No, because this is the technology piece that's solved. But as I said before, things to really look at, how do you manage this infrastructure that changed virtualized environment? How do you change the governance because it's no longer that each line of business owns their own equipment, their own application, their own storage. It's really they share that across the entire company. And also, how do you change the skill set of your IT personnel because it's no longer that I just manage five servers, but I have to understand what is the impact of the server to the application. And also when you look at the IT management processes, what you will see is the service level agreements between line of business and IT will change. Today you typically sign an agreement 99% availability of the server or storage. You will see in the future it's going to be, and we see this already happening to customers, they give transaction times guarantee on application. So I guarantee that the SAP transaction takes a millisecond. Now when you do that, it's very different than guaranteeing if your server works. It's not important if your server works or not if the storage is not working because you can't guarantee millisecond transaction time. So the skill set of the IT personnel needs to change needs to understand what the impact of his piece is for the entire process. Mm -hmm. So you really go, when you, when you look at the entire stack we're talking about, AI, BTO, business technology optimization, and business information optimization, really in the business technology optimization stack, there is where the old HP OpenView portfolio and the Mercury portfolio really comes together and is addressing exactly that point of time where you really go out and check out transaction times of an application, monitor them on a constant basis and can intervene and then drill down in every single piece. When you go then down to the infrastructure, you use storage essentials, proline essentials, integrity essentials as the products to really manage the product level, but you have the higher level view on really the transaction time or the application response time or whatever. For the next, you know, out, as far out as we can see, you know, three to five years, our intention is to bring everything to Blades, to use that common infrastructure to house things like Itanium Blades, which we already have today, storage Blades, you saw the tape announcement, um, you know, uh, server Blades, obviously, and to really uh, start to standardize on this as a common building block and so so that we can use things like dynamic smart cooling to kind of manage the power and cooling requirements in the data center because now we've got this uh, infrastructure that we you know know is standardized we can you know virtualize uh, blades we can manage them we can provision them um, but it's going to take us a while and we obviously have you know um, a lot of products in the product line that, that have to transition and we also you know some of these things difficult to do uh, and so it's, it's going to take us a number of years but directionally that's where we're going. When you have um, needs for really large-scale um, I would say super data warehouse kind of environments where you might need a lot of processing power but very little I.O. in a single instance then something like a Superdome might be more appropriate. If you need a lot of I.O.s then something like Blades might be more appropriate because you per CPU you get high I/O rates. Yeah. So that is a kind of the the trend, uh, the decision you have to make, and it's really depending on the application, depending on the workload, depending what you're doing, what the CPU load is, what the memory load is per CPU. That's where you make a decision. We have offerings, I think, that go far beyond what what Sun has been doing with the one dollar per CPU per hour kind of thing. Uh, I don't even know if it was per hour per day or something like that, but um, per hour, yeah. per hour, I think, yeah. Um, the, the way to look at that um, is depending really what kind of platform we're talking about, but when you look at the Unix platform, the integrity platform, we have something what we call Global Workload Manager, and what you can do is you can add a CPU and remove a CPU from a system. So the CPU is owned by HP in your system, when you activate it, you pay for the time you're consuming it, when you deactivate it, it's just going to be free. It's sitting in your server and it's going to be free. So that is really going to give you flexibility to decide when do you need it, when you don't need it, and uh, you drive through that workload management really depending on your application workload. Actually customers are buying into that and um, it's, it's really specifically for customers who have a, a changing workload, so it could be seasonality, it could be within a day, uh, within a week, 
wherever they have these changing workloads and it's really built uh, per hour, whatever the consumption is. When you turn it on, you pay. If you don't turn it off, you don't pay. Uh, but that's just one of the, the options. So we go far beyond that because we also have offerings on our services side, which we call flexible computing, <laughs> where you really can rent resources from HP for doing certain workloads. So for example, DreamWorks is using that for rendering their movies. So when they render Shrek, they go into HP data centers, they use a thousand Linux blades for the time of rendering and then return them back into HP and they actually host it in an HP data center. They just use the capacity for rendering. So that's again going into different steps. So flexible computing, whatever you have for renting capacity, is one of the lowest price offerings in the industry and the same on workload management. And I think that's why we also see so much uptake from customers where they really see it's useful. Look at the IT budget that HP has had in the last few years, we were spending about 20 to 25 percent on really what we call innovation. So this is really doing things differently in the IT organization to support the line of business. Between 75 and 80 percent of our budget was spent on maintenance and operation. Um, our CEO has challenged our CIO to flip these numbers around. He wants 80% on innovation, 20% on maintenance and operation. We're getting there by end of next year. HP um, is doing that within a three-year time frame. Um, is this a possibility for everyone? I would say no, because it really depends on what is the uh, CEO or CIO relationship, what is the line of business CIO relationship, because that is driving a lot of the change. In HP case, it is, I think, very positive because the CIO and the CEO have a very close relationship and they're really pushing that, and the CEO is really pushing the transformation. There's customers where you might see much more resistance with the board or with the CEO to drive that change. So for them, it might not be three years, for them, it might be 10 It's going to save $1 billion in actual cost savings per year. So we're taking $1 billion out of our IT budget Start from next year when you get to in 2008, and it's not cost avoidance; it's pure cost savings. So, when you look at that, this is, I think, the the thing to look at. Um, after the three-year period, you're making money, and even the transition you're trying to keep with the flat budget. So, we have not increased our budget in IT to do that. <coughs> so, this is all transition with existing budget. Is this case working for everyone? No, because it really, again, depends on a lot of the factors around that. But you can do it with a very flat budget, and you can, after that, drive into cost savings. Okay. There's also other ways to do that, where HP offers things like HP Financial Services, where you can go with leasing or deferred payment plans, where you can actually then really do the change in your infrastructure, start leveraging the cost savings, and you pay off that over time. So then your transition period might be not three years, but maybe five years or ten years depending on what the, the choices are that you make, but you actually might start saving from day one. So there's various options really depending on the customer scenario, but there's a lot of room to play and we can do it with zero budget increase. And you can do it with a peak at the beginning and then stronger cost savings depending really on what is your choice. 120 data centers down to six. Uh, we have significantly reduced the number of applications. We have changed the way of IT governance. Changes your power budgets, you know. Everything, power consumptions, and everything goes into that factor, and that's where the one billion dollar comes from. Uh, it just doesn't come from technology alone. It doesn't come only from application consolidation alone. It's really all together, and that's I think where we are really saying you have to look the holistic Planet approach. Holistic. And don't go just with technology. You're not going to do it on storage alone. You're not going to do it on the server and I, alone. And I heard a saying the other day, someone said, mm -hmm. you know, as the world transitions, the data center is becoming the computer. You kind of have to really sit and plan your data centers now, not, uh, you know, kind of go, I'm going to plan storage and servers and, mm -hmm. and uh, processes and throw them all in and magically, right. you know, it's going to work. So so this, this uh, I thought was a very insightful comment is that you really have to plan it from the data center in. Um, and, and plan everything around that structure.